Hello, welcome to today's episode of Byte Novels. Let's talk about Elastic Cache. Elastic Cache is an in-memory environment where we cache the results in order to reduce the overhead and latency on database. Now, fundamentally, first let's try to understand why do we cache. Whenever you request any information from your web application, behind the scenes it goes to your database, fetches the results, and then shows it on your browser. But if there is any information which is being accessed very frequently, then instead of retrieving that from the database, we store that content in the cache memory, which is your RAM, and we fetch it from the RAM and bring it back to your browser. Basically, why we do this? We do this because to improve the performance. Now, I hope we all understand and agree on one point that retrieving the content from the RAM is much more faster when compared to retrieving it from the disk database. So fundamentally, this is the reason why we use cache memory and why we use that in most of the web applications. Elastic Cache is one such offering by AWS. It is a web service that helps you improve the performance of web application by enabling users to retrieve data from fast and managed in-memory caches. Let us try to see this example. Here we have three entities, the user and the EC2 instance where your application is hosted and our elastic search. We will also see a database later in this video. So when the user requests any page in your web browser, it goes to the EC2 instance and then it first checks the elastic cache. Let's assume the user is trying to get the age and this age is a parameter which has been frequently accessed by the user. So the architect has decided to save this age in the elastic cache memory so whenever the user fetches the age, it first goes to the cache memory, gets the age, and then renders it to the user. So for some example, this age is not available in the cache memory. Then what do we do? Then we hit the database and we query the database using the user ID, like select star from table where user ID is equal to X, Y, Z, and we get the age of the user and before we return that to the user, we first update this particular key in the elastic cache and then we return it back to the user. So that next time when the user requests this particular age, instead of hitting the database, we will retrieve this from the elastic cache. AWS offers two such offering on elastic cache. One is memcached and second one is Redis. Although these both are used in different use cases, let us first see the commonalities between these two offerings. The first one is easy to use. Both Redis and Memcached are synthetically easy to use and require a very minimal amount of code to integrate into your application. Second thing is sub millisecond latency. AWS offers this that both Redis and Memcached are fast and it will require less than a millisecond to get the response time or the response data back from them. Third one is data partitioning. Both Redis and Memcached allow you to distribute the data among multiple nodes. This allows you to scale out to a better handle more data when the demand grows. So it is very easy to scale out and scale in your nodes in case of both Redis and Memcached. And the last is it supports for programming languages. You can pretty much write your SDK on any programming language of your choice be Java, Python, PHP, C, C++, Node.js, Ruby. Almost all the languages supports connecting to the Redis and Memcached. Let us understand a bit in detail about Memcache. Memcache is a multi-threaded. It can make use of multiple processing of cores. This means that you can handle more operations by scaling up compute capacity. In Memcache, you can create from one node or it can go to the maximum of 20 nodes. You can also add or remove nodes in your memcached server. This is basically used in use cases where you have to render your static web pages from your web application. Let us assume you have 20 nodes configured in your cluster and you give the edge node URL to the user who talks to it. So how does internally it fetches the data? So this is a simple example. So the application, it has the URL of the Elastic, elastic Cache Cluster Client. It directly connects to the cluster client and it asks for the value based on a particular key. 
Now the Elastic Cache Cluster Client uses a hashing algorithm against the key to determine which cache node contains this particular data item. Based on that, the data item is requested from the appropriate node and the data item is returned back to the application. So all the nodes are being saved as a metadata information using the hashing algorithm. Now RIDUS is also another offering by AWS. It is an in-memory data structure which can be used as a database, cache or a message broker. Contrary to memcache, this is single threaded but this has a lot many offerings compared to the memcache. You can create replicas, you can also create snapshot and backup of your data. In Redis, you can create six nodes in a particular shard. Now, in memcache we just discussed, in one cluster you can have one node and it can go up to 20 nodes. Whereas in Redis, you will hear concepts such as sharding. So you can either have a single node cluster or you can have a single sharding cluster or a multi sharding cluster. In one particular shard you can have from one node to six nodes. In that one of the node will be a primary and the rest nodes will be the read replicas of the primary node. In a cluster mode 1 to 15 shards can be used when it's display disabled you can have one shard. So basically it means that when you're creating a redis you can create on two different modes one is the Cluster mode. In cluster mode, you can go up to 15 shards. When you disable the cluster mode, you can have only one shard. The backups are stored in S3 with a retention of 0 to 35 days. This is a simple diagram to show how the cluster is. As we discussed, you can create a single node cluster or you can create a single sharding cluster. A shard can have up to six nodes. In this example, you can see a three node shard where the first node is a primary and the remaining nodes is the replica. If you enable the cluster mode while creating your Redis, then it will be created like the third diagram where you have multiple shards in the same cluster. So you can go up to 15 shards. Redis is much complex and it has a lot of offering compared to memcache. For example, it supports advanced data structures like list, set, sorted set, hashes, hyperlogs, etc, etc. And these offerings are very much different compared to memcache because you don't have any of these features in memcache. This is something very specific to Redis. In Redis, you can keep your data on disk with a point in time snapshot. So you can also take a snapshot which can be used for archiving or to recover back the data from your Redis. In Redis, you can create multiple replicas of your primary, like you can have one primary node and you can have multiple read replicas of that particular primary node. This is not there in memcache. Redis also supports transaction where you can do an atomic operation, which is fully isolated. It supports the asset properties. Redis also supports publish subscribe messaging pattern. This is widely used in a chat rooms or a chat, chat room kind of an application. Redis also support built-in commands for working with real-time geospatial data at scale. Some of the common benefits of caching, like why do we need caching? It's very obvious we have to improve the application performance or we have to reduce the database cost. Every time you hit the database, it's very costly operation. So instead you just query your in-memory database and then you fetch the content. It's more faster and it also reduces the cost and invariably it also reduces the load on the backend, right? And you always get a predictable performance. So these are some of the basic benefits of caching and different offerings of Elastic Cache by AWS. In the next video, we will see a demo on how to create a Redis cluster and how to create a memcache cluster. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like my video, please like, subscribe and follow and comment if you want me to talk about some other interesting topics.